What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, September 27th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Before we jump into the alerts, just wanted to remind you, we've got our Iron Duck web class starting this coming Tuesday, October 1st at 4 p.m. Central Time. So uh, there's a lot of information in this strategy class, which is why we broke it up into three different parts. So part one, you don't wanna miss it, October 1st, this Tuesday at 4 p.m. Central. If you haven't registered yet, make sure you go to navigationtrading.com slash iron duck registration and, uh, and get signed up. It's gonna be amazing. Of course, it will be recorded. We will edit it and you know cut it down into bite-sized sections like we do all our other courses. That will be available for pro members, but uh, there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff going on at the live event, so if at all possible, Make sure you are there. Uh, let's see, who got caught being hot this week in the community goes to Joe Rabena. I th hope I'm saying that right, Joe. Uh, Joe is a newer member, but he's jumped in right away, answering other people's questions, helping other members, love it. That's what this community is all about. So congrats, Joe, you got caught being hot. And let's go to the alerts, starting with 23rd was Monday, and our first alert was an opening trade in forward slash 6B. So I had been watching the British pound for about a week, and implied, volatil uh, implied volatility kept creeping up, and so we went ahead and entered with a short strangle in 6B. So if we take a look, uh, you can see it's come down a little bit since we put that on, but still well within our range. We've got some profit here. I was actually hoping to take this off earlier this week. We were almost at 30% of max profit, and then uh, implied volatility went up a little bit. Uh, anyway, we didn't, uh, we didn't, we never got filled. In fact, I don't think I even put an order in, but I was close to it. Uh, but if we if we get 30% of max profit next week, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and book this one. So that's in forward slash six B. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in ZW in wheat. So we opened up a new iron condor in wheat. And we did this when the uh, cycle had 60 days to expiration. And then the very next trade alert was closing uh, adjusting trade where we closed out our previous iron condor. Uh, booked over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. So working our way back to profitability in wheat. Uh, let's go, let's take a look at the current one that we have on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, dead centered, got a little bit of profit there, not enough to take off yet. So just playing the waiting game in wheat. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in gold. So we closed out our short call vertical that we had in gold. This was part of a previous iron condor. We were down to only having two days left to expiration. Unfortunately, gold never got back into that range. So we just closed out that piece. We do have another piece on in gold, which is a full iron condor. And you can see prices hanging out right here. So we could use a little bit of up movement in gold. And if price does continue lower, we'll add another iron condor centered around the current price and, uh, and continue to keep that dream alive. Next trade alert, opening trade in SPX. So we opened up a new weekly double calendar in SPX. We did this starting uh, in the front week with eight days. The back week had 22 days to expiration. And so let's take a look at that. Prices have come down in the S and P, uh, but we can uh, we're still we're still in this one. If we take a look here, this is our current position. It's just outside of our range. Uh, obviously, if if price makes a big gap down over the weekend, that's going to hurt. Uh, but of course, if it comes back into range, we'll be in good shape. Uh, so we're down a few hundred bucks, about four shekels on that one at this point. Uh, so just holding this over the weekend, and we've got five days to expiration. So we'll be closing this out on Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, so look for that in SPX. Next trade, opening trade in oil, uh, forward slash CL. So we entered a new short strangle in CL. Uh, price has down, been uh, pretty volatile in oil, uh, but even with all that volatility, you know, right when we put this on, implied volatility spiked. So we're down right away on the trade. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, come back nicely. We're down a tiny bit, uh, but still well within our range. Uh, you know, implied volatility is so high. I mean, if you look at this, we've got a $1,700 max profit on one contract. So big, uh, 
big product with oil. Make sure you're only trading this in a sizable account. I always tell people you, you want to have at least 25K in your account if you're going to be making a trade like this because, yes, it does have a great max profit, but that comes with risk as well. So make sure you are minding your position management correctly. Uh, so here's, here's what oils look like. We had that big spike after the Saudi oil refineries got bombed. And then uh, they came out and said, ah, no problem. We're going to have our production back up within a couple weeks. And so the price of oil went back down, which really surprised me. I really thought we were going to get a little bit of a bounce higher here. But that just goes to show you never, never know what's going to happen and was why you got to play the math, which is what we do here. So uh, it, it looked like it was going to bounce a couple days ago, then bounce yesterday. And now it's looking, it was down. It looks like it's bouncing again. So who knows what's happening in oil, but uh, we're, in, we're in good shape on our position. Rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So we had one set of our short call verticals in the queues. Uh, it was in October with 24 days to expiration. We got to a point with the market moving down where we were well over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. So we went ahead and rolled that out to November. So now we have both sets in November. So let's take a look at the queues. And here's, here's both of them. So here is uh, the 193, 198. I'll take that off. So here's one of them pretty close to right where we rolled it to. And then our other one here, uh, it's got a little bit of profit. Just holding these for that short delta exposure. Speaking of short delta, our ratio is about two to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio. Uh, we like to keep a little bit of a short bias for those volatile down moves that we can see. And uh, so we're in good shape there uh, compared to our overall theta position, about two to one. Next position or next trade, closing adjusting trade in four slash ZB. So we closed out one set of our short strangles in ZB. Uh, this was an adjusted strangle, booked over 30% of max profit on that piece. Still trying to work our way back to profits in bonds. Um, let's see, was there another one? No, yeah. So that was the only bond trade this week. So. Uh, now we've got just the one piece on. So let's go to the platform and look at that. Uh, it's, the, it's right here. So bonds coming down a tiny bit today. We could use a little bit more down movement in bonds back to center. Uh, but if price does continue higher up into this range, we will look to add another short strangle on, continue to collect that credit, extend duration, and get back to profits in bonds. This piece still has 28 days. So late next week or early the following week, we will uh, we'll be looking to, to roll that out or close it depending on where we are. And uh, you know, I'd like to add another one out in the December cycle, currently at 56 days to expiration, uh, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna overlap uh, when price is still well within range on this one. So if it, if it jumps out higher, we'll definitely do that. Uh, applied volatility still continues to stay high in the notes and bonds, so we want to be premium sellers in there for sure. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in SPY. So what we did is we opened up a new SPY uh, iron condor, or we we opened we added to our current position, I should say, and so price is dead centered, pretty much where we put it on, got a tiny bit of profit. And then the very next uh, alert the next day was we closed out our other SPY iron condor as price moved down, came back into profits for us. So we booked over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. And so then we're still just holding that one iron condor in SPY. And lastly, today's only trade on Friday was a rolling adjusting trade in KRE. So we've got 21 days left to expiration in the October cycle. So once we get down into that range, we like to roll out to the next cycle. In this case, we rolled our puts up from 48 to 52, kept our calls at 53. So now we have the short 52 puts, short 53 calls. And then we've got another piece, which is a, uh, a short strangle in November with the, with the 50 puts and 57 calls. So we've got two pieces on here in KRE. I was hoping for a little down movement today and I was just going to close this one and then just have the one out in November, but price moved higher. So we rolled the puts up, rolled it out to November, collected some more credit and you can see prices hanging out right here. So nice, decent range to play around in and, and collect some more theta. And then our other piece is the 5057 
Uh, this one has not been adjusted or anything, so we've got some profit there, just waiting for some more time to pass uh, before we do anything in KRE. All right. Um, oh, wow. S&Ps are moving down. By the way, uh, let me just show you something in SPX. I've got a an iron duck, so I'll give you another little sneak peek into what's going on here. Uh, I've got one that I put on a couple weeks ago, and if price moves a little bit lower today, it, it, this position actually expires today. If we can get down in this range here, uh, we'll book max profit of over 1600 bucks on one contract. Uh, but just need price to get a little bit lower. Uh, if it stays right here or for some reason blasts higher, we'll still make a profit, uh, but our max profit is right in this range. And so we just need a little bit more down movement, maybe a tweet from Trump. Come on, buddy. You know, tell China that you're mad at him or something. I don't know. Just get this down a little bit. Anyway, um, you're going to love this Iron Duck stuff. It is awesome. And I uh, can't wait to share it with you. Uh, so let's go over some of the other positions we've got. I mentioned 6B. I mentioned oil. ES, we've got a long put vertical that we've just been holding for that short delta exposure. Price has come down nicely here. Just holding this for some more downside potentially. In gold, I already mentioned that. We've got that iron condor in gold. Natty gas. Uh, Natty gas has been on a little bit of a mini slide down, but uh, still well within range. In our two sets of short strangles here, could use a little bit of up movement, a little bit of a bounce. And uh, we've got, what do we have left here? 31 days. So we got plenty of time in this cycle before we move on to the next. I mentioned ZB, I mentioned ZW. Yeah, we got the iron condor. Apple, we've got this long put vertical that we've been holding for some short delta exposure. Price is just inside of our range here. So looking for some more downside there to help that one. DE, John Deere. Uh, similar price just inside of our range, holding this for some more downside to benefit that trade. DIA, we've got two different sets of short call verticals, uh, one of which is in November. You can see prices is hanging out right here. The other one is in October, and we're, we're, we're just about 50% of max profit there, actually just a little above as the market's moving down as we're recording this. Uh, so if, if price continues lower in the next week, we'll definitely roll our strikes down as well as roll this out to November. So that's the plan in DIA. EWZ, uh, so this is, this is another one that's down to 21 days to expiration. So early next week, probably Monday, you know, if we can get some follow through to the downside, we'll just close this and book a profit. If not, we may look to roll out to November. Uh, the only thing that I would be more inclined to close it is implied volatility is super low. So yeah, I would probably just close that. Even if it were not at 50% of max profit, probably just book whatever we have. Uh, of course, we hope it doesn't rip higher because that's going to uh, take away that profit. But uh, we'll look to do that next week. Hopefully get just a little bit of follow through to the downside here and, uh, and book a profit in EWZ. Goldman, Goldman Sachs, uh, we've got a long put vertical on here that's out of our range. So just waiting for some more downside to get back in. IYR, we've got a, uh, an iron condor here, dead centered, no, no profit or loss yet, just waiting on that one. I mentioned KRE, I mentioned the Qs, SMH. So this is our one other uh, undefined risk trade that is in October. So we've got 21 days to expiration. Just wanted to, again, give this till Monday. See if we get a little bit more follow through to the downside before we roll this, collect some more credit on that roll out to November. Uh, I mentioned SPX. Oh no, no, I didn't. Oh yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, just, just outside of our range. Need, need to bounce here uh, to get back in early next week. SPY I mentioned, and lastly, XLK. So this is another one. If we get a little bit more continuation to the downside, we will address early next week. Uh, just been holding this for that short delta exposure. This is a long put vertical. And so we will look to roll this out to November, roll those strikes a little bit closer, collect another credit and keep that position going. So I hope that was helpful. Everybody look forward to a great next week of trading. Have a great weekend. Talk to you then.